Welcome everyone to this video by Learn Civil Engineering, where we will be learning about internal forces within structures in general. We will start by introducing the types of internal forces within an element of a structure, then learning the positive notations for the internal forces within a bar, and we will finish with an example problem where we will calculate the internal forces at a specific point within an element of a structure. In general, the bars that make up a structure carry the loads applied to the structure to the foundations. As a very simple example, consider this structure consisting of a single bar that is free at point C and fixed at point A. If we were to apply a force, F, to the free end of the bar, to guarantee equilibrium, we would have the following support reactions at the fixed support. As the bar transmits the applied force to the support, internal forces are induced in the structure. Whereas within truss structures we saw that bars can only carry axial forces, which are forces parallel to the axis of the bars, bars within general structures can carry axial forces, shear forces and moments, where shear forces are forces perpendicular to the axis of the bars and moments cause bending moments in the bars. Therefore, at point B in the bar, there will be an internal force parallel to the bar, an internal force perpendicular to the bar and a moment. When computing internal forces, in order to guarantee equilibrium, we must only consider the part of the structure to the left of the section or the part to the right of the section. Looking at our simple structure for example, cutting the bar at point B, we can consider the structure to the left of the cut or to the right of the cut. As we cannot consider the whole structure, we will focus on the left side. For this example, we will imagine the structure has a horizontal support reaction of 2 kN acting towards the left, a vertical support reaction of 5 kN acting upwards, and a moment of 18 kN meters acting in an anti-clockwise direction. We will also imagine the length of the bar from point A to point B is 2.5 meters. Now, as we have cut the bar at point B, we must replace the right side of the structure with the existing internal forces. As these are all unknown, we will assume sensors for them, and writing them onto our diagram, we have the axial force, N, the shear force, V, and the moment m. To compute the unknown internal forces, we must apply the conditions for equilibrium, where the sum of all horizontal forces must be equal to zero, the sum of all vertical forces must be equal to zero, and the sum of all moments relative to a point must be equal to zero, and we have chosen that point to be b. Taking the x-coordinate direction to be positive then, the sum of all horizontal forces is equal to n minus two, which equals zero. Taking the y-coordinate direction to be positive, the sum of all vertical forces is equal to v plus 5, which equals 0. And finally, taking the anticlockwise rotation direction to be positive, the sum of all moments relative to point b is equal to 18 minus 5 times 2.5 plus m, which equals 0. And each of these equations only have one unknown, and they're very simple, so we can see from them that n is equal to 2 kN, V is equal to negative 5 kN, and M is equal to negative 5.5 kN meters. Having computed the internal forces at point B in the bar, we can see that if equilibrium is guaranteed for one side of the structure, equilibrium will also be guaranteed for the other side of the structure, considering forces of equal intensity but opposite sense. Therefore, we can write out the positive notations for internal forces in a bar. For structural analysis, considering a bar which is oriented from left to right, the positive internal forces are denoted like so, where the positive axial force is acting outwards from the centre of the bar, subjecting the bar to tension, the positive shear force is acting downwards on the left and upwards on the right, both being perpendicular to the bar, and the positive moment is acting in the clockwise direction on the left of the bar and in the anticlockwise direction on the right of the bar. Bars are typically oriented from left to right, except for vertical bars, which are oriented upwards, which means the bottom is the left and the top is the right, like so. And using these principles and notations, we'll be able to compute the internal forces in any section of a structure. Let's have a look at a more complicated example. Consider this structure, which consists of two bodies. A straight bar from point A to point B, and a bent bar connected at point B with a free end at the other end. The structure is being supported by a hinge support at point A and a roller support at point B. The dimensions of the bars are shown in the diagram, and a uniformly distributed load is being applied to the entire length of bar AB 
acting in the downwards direction and has a magnitude of 10 kN per metre. There are also two concentrated loads being applied to the structure at the free end of the bent bar, a vertical load of 6 kN acting in the downwards direction and a horizontal load of 10 kN acting towards the right. Finally, the weight of the structure is negligible, which just means we don't need to account for the weight of the bars. Using the principles we have covered, we are going to determine the internal forces at point C, which is at the middle of bar AB, and then the internal forces at point D, which is at the middle of the vertical section of the bent bar. To start off, we must calculate the reaction forces at the supports. At the hinge support, there will be a horizontal and a vertical reaction force, and at the roller support, there will only be a vertical reaction force. To calculate the reaction forces, we must apply the conditions of equilibrium for the entire structure, where the sum of all horizontal forces must be equal to zero, the sum of all vertical forces must be equal to zero, and the sum of all moments relative to a point must be equal to zero. Taking the x-coordinate direction to be positive, the sum of all horizontal forces is equal to ax plus 10, which equals zero. As ax is our only unknown for this equation, we can solve it now. And doing so, ax is equal to negative 10 kN. Taking the y-coordinate direction to be positive, the sum of all vertical forces is equal to ay plus by minus 10 times 4 minus 6, which equals 0. Now we have two unknowns, so we'll come back to this equation in a second. Finally, taking the anticlockwise rotation direction to be positive, the sum of all moments relative to point A is equal to negative 10 times 4 times 2 plus by times 4 minus 6 times 7 minus 10 times 7, which equals 0. Here we only have one unknown, so rearranging for by, we get by equals 192 divided by 4, which equals 48 kilonewtons. Now we can substitute this value into our equation for the sum of all vertical forces, and doing so, we get ay plus 48 minus 40 minus 6 equals 0. So ay is equal to negative 2 kN. Having calculated the reaction forces, we will add them to the diagram. And doing so, at point A there is a horizontal reaction force of 10 kN acting in the left direction and a vertical reaction force of 2 kN acting downwards. And then, at point B, there is a vertical reaction force of 48 kN acting in the upwards direction. Having calculated the reaction forces at the supports, we can now calculate the internal forces at points C and D. And starting with point C, we will cut bar AB in half, considering the left side. Doing this, we have a bar 2 metres in length, being supported by the hinge support at point A, and ending at point C. We also have the loads being applied to this section as illustrated in the diagram. As for finding any unknown forces, we must annotate the unknown internal forces at point C. We will now reference back to our positive forces diagram, and for us, point C is the right side of the bar, so we will draw on the corresponding positive internal forces like so. Now, it's simply a case of applying the conditions of equilibrium, as we know that the section of the structure must still be in equilibrium. Taking the x-coordinate direction to be positive, the sum of all horizontal forces is equal to n minus 10, which equals 0. So we can instantly see that n is equal to 10 kN. Taking the y-coordinate direction to be positive, the sum of all vertical forces is equal to v minus 10 times 2 minus 2, which equals 0. So we can instantly see that v is equal to 22 kN. And finally, taking the anticlockwise rotation direction to be positive, the sum of all moments relative to point C is equal to 2 times 2 plus 10 times 2 times 1 plus m equals 0. So we can see that m is equal to minus 24 kilonewton meters. So we can conclude by saying at point C, there is a positive axial force of 10 kilonewtons, a positive shear force of 22 kilonewtons, and a negative moment of 24 kilonewton meters. To calculate the internal forces at point D, we simply just need to repeat this process. You're welcome to pause the video here to attempt this yourself if you feel confident enough to do so. Welcome back if you did attempt to calculate the internal forces in part D. For this, we will cut the bent bar at point D and consider only the bottom section like so. 
Again, we must annotate the unknown internal forces at point D, and referencing back to our positive force diagram for a vertical bar, the corresponding positive internal forces look like this. Applying the conditions of equilibrium to solve for the unknowns, taking the x-coordinate direction to be positive, the sum of all horizontal forces is equal to negative 10 minus v, which equals zero. So we can instantly see that v is equal to negative 10 kilonewtons. Taking the y-coordinate direction to be positive, the sum of all vertical forces is equal to negative 2 minus 10 times 4 plus 48 plus n, which equals 0. So we can instantly see that n is equal to negative 6 kilonewtons. And finally, taking the anticlockwise rotation direction to be positive, the sum of all moments relative to point D is equal to negative 10 times 2 plus 2 times 4 plus 10 times 4 times 2 plus m, which equals 0. So we can see that m is equal to negative 68 kilonewton meters. So we can conclude by saying at point D, there is a negative axial force of 6 kilonewtons, a negative shear force of 10 kilonewtons, and a negative moment of 68 kilonewton meters. Note also that this could have been done more easily by considering only the top part of the structure like so. I only chose to use the bottom part of the structure to demonstrate that you must use the entire part of the structure, not just up to the next support. To summarise what we have learnt this video, we introduced the types of internal forces within an element of a structure, then learning the positive notations for the internal forces within a bar, and we finished with an example problem where we calculated the internal forces at a specific point within an element of a structure. This has been a video by Learn Civil Engineering. If you have found this video useful at all, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel to show your support. If you do have any remaining questions or would like me to cover a specific topic, please leave them in the comment section below and I will try to respond as soon as possible. Thank you for watching.